as you cozy up to your friends, family, and loved ones on this lovely, not dumpster fire of an autumn, just remember one thing. Fireplaces are bad, and they're bad for you, and they're bad for everyone. Why am I talking like non-specific regional Santa Claus? <laughs> Many of you, like me, may have grown up recreationally burning wood on the fireplace as a kind of bring everyone together, cozy up around the warmth, the infrared radiation, and it feels nice and traditional and uh, the, the nice scent of wood fills the home. It's great, but it's terrible. It's terrible for you and it's terrible for the surrounding area. From a scientific point of view, wood smoke produces particles that can linger around in your home for days, if not weeks, and the particles that that wood creates can be some of the most harmful particles for you to inhale. Those particles can make their way not only into the lungs, but into your bloodstream and cause untold uh, downward effects. The World Health Organization estimated that burning solid fuel in the home around the world accounted for about 2 million deaths in a year. And looking at some of the scientific literature, children who live in homes with active fireplaces or wood stoves uh, suffer higher incidence of asthma, coughs, bronchitis, uh, waking at night, compromised lung function. Among adults, wood burning is associated with more frequent emergency room visits, hospital admissions for respiratory illnesses, uh, among with increased mortality from heart attacks. Wood smoke is terrible. And I say this not to ruin your holidays, but to remind ourselves that we need to check our intuitions against what we know. Yes, fireplaces, burning wood during the holidays, it all feels fine. It feels natural like our ancestors did, but we know it's bad and you shouldn't do it anymore. And if your family complains at Thanksgiving, <laughs> tell them I sent you. And tell your uncle that too. Hello and welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections, and I waft through the smoke that is the internet in the hopes of answering them in an entertaining and interesting way. And then I give you a hint about what's coming up next on this channel. Hint! Uh, I play an island. Pass. This is fun. But getting right down to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we were trying to figure out if anime running, Naruto-style running, is actually faster, which is an important point we'll get to. But we were trying to figure out if it was faster. And to do that, we enlisted the help of six-time gold medalist sprinter and relay racer, Jenna Tarmo, who is absolutely lovely, and we loved having her in the void on the channel. She is incredibly talented. We'd love to have her back again. But we found that anime running is indeed slower for both experts and like myself. You can watch the video if you haven't yet, it's pinned down in the YouTube comments, but what I want to know is, what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from Sam Bland, who says something, I don't know, not that interesting, you know, it's kind of... Who says, Science Thor's legs probably would have been sore after this. Oh, I'll tell you one thing, and we'll get to this a little bit later, but I was limping for a while because A, I don't sprint, and B, I'm not very athletic. Anime running does a weird thing to your legs that you're not used to. So if you're just sprinting, you expect to feel it, uh, you know, in your in your core, in your lower back, in your hip flexors, uh, in your quads and stuff like that. But when you anime run, since you are leaning forward, you're almost so far over that you're putting all of your weight and all of your balancing just on your quads, your quadriceps alone, and it stresses them much more than normal sprinting does. We'll get to this, but what Jenna pointed out is that when she was done anime running, she was a lot more tired than she was sprinting. Elaine Martell says, in competitive running, just a 0.1% difference can mean the difference between winning and losing, so 3% difference between anime running and normal running is huge. You are absolutely right. For example, if you look up the world record for the fastest woman's 100 meter sprint, as Jenaba has done, there is a record that has remained unbroken since 1988, and that record is 10.49 seconds set by Florence Griffith Joyner uh, in 1988. 88. Jenaba's time for a 100 meter dash is also under 11 seconds. It's obviously not the world record, but she is just a few tenths of a second away from being the fastest woman on the planet. And you saw her do that during the episode. So a 3% difference, which can be tenths of a second or more, 
That is a huge difference in what you can actually do. And so if you are anime running and it necessarily makes anyone who does it that much slower, you definitely don't want to do it if speed and speed specifically is what you're interested in. Our next comment comes from Fritz Wolfgang who says, Kyle is an alien supervillain trying to pass himself off as human because he's all like, we are both humans in human bodies. That's something an alien would say. What? How dare you? You think, I'm f if, if I was an alien, I would definitely come down here and I would learn how to words correctly in the right order that humans say, and I would know how to use things correctly. Hello? Hello? No? Who is this? What? We strike at noon. <laughs> Tom says, the gold medalist is only 10% faster than Kyle. This is the real WTF here. 0.67 seconds and that's it, LOL. See, this is what we were just talking about. It sounds like not that much, that I am just 10% slower than Jenaba indeed surprised me too. But if you think about the fact that being a sprinter not on the world stage and a sprinter who's the fastest person in the world could be within a margin of 10%, you can start to see the difference here. And I will point out something. We only had 50 meters of track. I was going flat out for that 50 meters. It definitely felt like Jenaba had more gas to give. And I point that out because if this was 100 meters, I, I'm positive I would not be able to sustain my same speed that entire time. Jenaba is an athlete and a well-trained one at that, so if we were doing 100 meters, if we were doing a relay race, she would absolutely be much, much faster than me, probably more than 10%, because I cannot maintain that level of uh, stamina and that level of endurance. I, I wasn't doing so hot afterwards. I was breathing real heavy. She made fun of me for it. A lot. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to Nick Leeper, who says, the problem with this test is that, yes, you are using an expert runner, but what she is is an expert in normal running. It sounded like this was the first time she was hearing about it. You could easily hypothesize that if she was trained to run anime style, she would get better at it while there is little to no room for improvement at normal running. So the question becomes, could she improve more than 3% if she practiced anime running? There might be some truth to this myth. Of course, the chances that anime running is actually faster is pretty slim, as sprinting is one of the most researched sports on Earth, and if there were a faster way for somebody to run, they probably would be doing it already. In this case, I actually think that using complete noobs might be better than using a pro athlete. At least noobs don't have an advantage either way. Of course, seeing Kyle beaten by 10% makes this great video no matter the conc- I know. Do you see me running too? My back, like my heel hits the ground first as I run. Like I'm like shaggy, like <laughs> zoinks. That's not how he sounds. Zoinks like, hey Scoob. No. Yes, Neek, I agree with you, and others pointed out the same thing. If Jenaba trained in anime style running, she'd probably be faster at anime style running, but as you point out, the fact that runners don't do this is decent evidence that it's probably not faster or else we would see someone trying it or someone training in it or someone trying to get the fastest times with it. Something similar happened in swimming where if you ever watch competitive swimming, they started after some point in time, they started diving and then they would extend their time underwater and their speed by moving their legs like dolphin fins. And that wasn't always a thing that swimmers did until someone figured out that it was actually faster on average. So the evidence that the best sprinters in the world, someone like Usain Bolt, don't anime run instead when a tiny percent of difference can make the difference between winning and losing and tens of thousands of dollars and not or more is, yeah, that's all pretty good evidence that anime running is probably not. And it's dangerous. I felt, we'll get to that. For pointing this all out, Neek, I think, hmm, we have to give you a gold medal in super nerdery, um, dumb nerd, first place. But of course, I'm not always right. Sometimes I will make a protein shake and then rest it on my lap and then a kitty cat will come across my lap and then she will, because she's partially blind, she will put her foot inside the protein shake and she will immediately realize that and then shake her foot all around and then there will be protein shake everywhere on everything. And that's something I probably could have avoided with some foresight for her forelimbs. So what did I get wrong last week? I have a lot of cats. Luke Fli, who has a picture of me as his avatar. Nice. Says, fools, you didn't lean far enough and neither of you centered your chakra either. Okay, first of all, chakras, not a thing. 
<laughs> Second of all, we didn't lean very far forward because we absolutely couldn't. Uh, Jenaba was leaning even less forward than me, and I think that gives you an idea that she didn't really want to or didn't feel comfortable for a professional runner to do. When I was doing it, I, I felt like I was very close to falling, absolutely toppling over, and scraping my face on the ground. I tried to, you saw it in slow motion, but I tried my all trying to run really, really fast, and when you do that leaning over as much as you can, it feels down downright dangerous, which is why neither myself nor Jenaba would recommend full out sprinting like Naruto or anything like that. So we didn't lean far enough because got to look out for all I got. Cosmo Goblin has a correction who says exponentially more drag. You said exponentially more drag when you mentioned your drag equation, except when you're raising velocity in the drag equation to the power of two, that's actually quadratic growth. Exponential growth would be something like raising the entire equation to a power, to a variable, and that would be more accurate. And yes, I said that off the top of my dome and it was incorrect. And sometimes what you write down isn't always the thing you say on the day that you film it. And I'm wrong, you're right, you win. You cross the finish line. Are you happy? Good. The Ordeal has a correction, and many of you said the same thing. I assume that anime running is stylized in that way in anime and manga because it's easier to animate. Now, I didn't actually go through the trouble of corroborating that some animator said that, yes, it is we're cutting corners, we're trying to save some money, but it seems plausible. If you didn't have to animate someone's arms at all and you could just animate their legs as they run, I guess you would save some drawing, some inking, some production time. Sure. I would love that if anime running and Naruto style running was just a money saving technique and had nothing to do with style whatsoever. It would kind of invalidate my whole video. John A has a correction who says, uh, just saying, when they cross the finish line, professional sprinters, they always go full Naruto. Which is to say, if you've ever seen a race, when professional runners get to the finish line, they always go uh, like that to cross the finish line. I will point out something important though, that is not for speed. They are not changing their running style in the last few steps of a race to increase their speed. Rather, they are already close to the finish line and they are extending the length of their body to cross the finish line as soon as possible. They are not running any faster. They are just changing the shape of their body so it crosses the plane of the finish line faster. So I would say that in those cases, that's not Naruto running. That is just trying to extend your body. Uh, if it was easier to kick your leg out to cross the finish line first, I imagine they'd do that too. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to DLE511, who says, hey Kyle, love the show. Huh? But two corrections here. Uh, this style of shinobi running isn't about being fast, so using time as a standard is not useful. It was mainly about running long distances between towns or running quietly while carrying heavy hunks of metal like weapons. The shinobi profession was in fact all about espionage. So blending in rather than running away loudly was most definitely preferred. The correct form to conserve stamina requires you to not swing your body like we normally run. So putting your arms all the way back helps counterbalance your forward upper body Sure. And it's also easy to spot any unwanted swinging in training. Source a real life ninja and then links to this video. Many of you also link to this video of a real ninja explaining why you would do something like a Naruto run. Fair enough. I have two points though. If you are trying to run for stealth, I could see anime running being possibly advantageous or you want to carry something behind your back or present a, a smaller target for someone to potentially throw a ninja star at or something like that. That makes sense, sure. My first point is that we we're testing if it's faster because the popular consciousness around anime style running has to do with speed. It doesn't necessarily have to do with stealth. I think what most people think about anime running is that it could be faster or slower. So that is explicitly what we are testing. And I do have some problems with saying, with everyone saying, a lot of you said this, that it's actually uh, a stamina saver, that it's easier to do this and you waste less energy. Both Jenaba and myself found, as I said at the beginning of this episode, that when you are so far lean forward, it puts so much extra stress on muscles you're not expecting to be using when you're running, like your quadriceps, but putting it all in your quadriceps and running in a weird way, it stresses your legs out a lot more than sprinting does. So I'm, I'm not sold that this would actually save any kind of energy and any kind of stamina if you were sprinting or running. If you were just moving, you know, at a, a slow walk or a fast walk, Sure, 
Maybe, but if you're trying to get somewhere fast, it feels more dangerous, it feels harder to do on your body, and it feels like it wastes more energy than it would possibly save. But DLE 511, you had the best collection of corrections all bagged within some stealthy ninja bag. So you, <laughs> they have those. So you are indeed a super nerd. Sir! Didn't see that coming, did you? Fool. While you were hanging out at the mall, I was anime running, studying the blade. Nothing personal, kid. Blah, 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 blah. I tip my fedora to you, sir. And now moving right along to this week's episode of Because Science. In this week's episode, we are making a real computer out of Magic the Gathering cards. Oh, 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 oh. I play an island pass. Fun. That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are making a computer, more specifically a universal Turing machine, out of the interactions between one of the most complicated games on the planet, Magic the Gathering. Many of you know that I'm a huge Magic the Gathering nerd, so in this video we are going through computer science, we are going through Magic the Gathering, we are getting very nerdy, and we're getting nerdy with some content creators from the Magic the Gathering community that you may already know and love. So, it's gonna be a good one. Get excited or at least mulligan down to six, and keep the hand. So go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet, all about anime style running, and if it is faster or not, and leave me your best comments, corrections, and questions very quickly, who as quick as you can, sprint in there. YouTube.com slash Because Science, Facebook.com slash Because Science, and at Because Science on wherever that is. I don't know. Also, if you like YouTube, you are probably aware of the Team Trees movement happening right now in what will probably amount to the biggest collaboration in the history of this platform. Team Trees is now a thing. And in conjunction with Mark Rober, with Mr. Beast, with Smarter Every Day, and probably many of your favorite YouTubers, Because Science is also now a part of the Team Trees movement. So if you want to go to teamtrees.org, you can pledge your support and you can donate. For every dollar, Team Trees will plant a tree. And our goal is to plant 20 million trees by 2020. What started out as just a weird Twitter suggestion to Mr. Beast is now on the route, hopefully, to becoming reality. So go to teamtrees.org and pledge your support there. Obviously, planting 20 million trees isn't gonna solve the climate crisis. It's not gonna deal with all of our environmental issues, but it will show, if we can do this, that we can come together, we can be supportive, be positive, and have some kind of driving force behind us all. And I encourage you to support that kind of enthusiasm because if we're gonna solve anything on this planet, it needs passion. And don't forget, when you were walking, on the beach, and you saw that single pair of footprints, that was when I was on your back, and you were carrying me, like Yoda. I'm always there. 